the fallopian tube and another name is the uterine tube and also the salpinges and the salpings for a singular one and from that name you can say that inflammation of the fallopian tube is named salpingitis and surgical removal of the fallopian tube is salpingectomy so there are two fallopian tubes and the function for it is a passage by which the egg released from the ovum reaches the uterine cavity using a peristaltic muscular contractions now let's zoom in into this part and see what do we have so the end of the fallopian tube contains a finger like projections and its name is the fimbria and it it moves and sweeps away the ovum released from the ovaries now the fallopian tube is divided into four parts the infundibulum which contains the fimbria in it the ampulla and it's the most common site for fertilization and I think it deserves the two stars and the isthmus which is a narrow part there is an, a narrow lumen in this part now the junction between the fallopian tube and the uterus named the ureotubular junction and the fourth part is the intrauterine part so we have the infundibulum the ampulla the isthmus and the intrauterine part now let's have a cross section from the fallopian tube and see what it looks like so this is the lumen and we have four layers a mucosal layer near to the lumen composed of simple columnar epithelium then the lamina propria which contains a vascular connective tissue and three types of cells and let's see these cells so we have a simple columnar epithelium just like the mucosal layer and aciliated columnar cells embedded with the simple columnar epithelium and it's abundant in the infundibulum and the ampulla and it's hormone sensitive the high amount of estrogen will lead to increase the production of the cilia and the third type of cells named peg cells and it contains an apical granules which secrete the tubular fluid into the lumen and the tubular fluid has two functions one is the nutrition for the oocyte the spermatozoa and the zygote and the other function is something we call the capacitation of the sperm and by that I mean the removal of the glycoproteins and by glycoproteins I mean the antigens of the sperm so there will be no immune reaction triggered by the sperms so we have three types of cells simple columnar ciliated columnar and peg cells now the third layer is the subserosa layer or the muscularis layer and it contains a loose connective tissue and a blood vessels and lymphs and the muscle the smooth muscle layer an outer longitudinal smooth muscles and an inner silker layer of smooth muscles and the outer layer is the serosa which is derived from the visceral peritoneum so we have four layers the mucosa layer the lamina propria the subserosa or the muscularis layer and the serosa I want to talk about investigations that you might consider if you are suspecting a disease involving the fallopian tube and one of them is the patency test in which we see if there is an obstruction in the lumen or not and the other one is chlamydia antibodies because chlamydia is a common cause for salpingitis and also you can check for pelvic inflammatory disease now let's see in general what does the inflammation do to the lumen in the beginning it does Sacular dilatation which will eventually lead into an obstruction and we call that salpingitis isthmica nodosa and it will lead into one of the two and it, by the way it's a common cause of infertility and it might lead also into ectopic pregnancy and by ectopic pregnancy I mean that 
the zygote is implanted in the fallopian tube it becomes very big and eventually lead to rupture of the tube now there is a surgical procedure for relieving the obstruction named tuboplasty and with that i think this is the end for the fallopian tube